Clearly, good morning to Reverend Goof. Would you allow me to be able to share the screen if I need to? I did. Okay, very good, very good. Uh, good morning to you, pastors. Uh, glad to be in your midst again. And I just wanted to be able to share a little bit of the developments that are happening uh, even here in our own home okay. ground in Kenya. Uh, my name is Paul Joshua Gutu, and I'm part of the WEC organization and been serving in the Netherlands where we have a cross-cultural okay. mission training program until God called us to Kenya to where we are right now. So let me be able to share in this next few minutes just some of the, the things that I see and uh, the particular work that God has called us to be able to do. I'll, I'll share with you my screen to use this PowerPoint. And later on, we may have questions if you may, and I will give you also information regarding uh, my contact and things of that nature. I wanted to begin by asking a, a particular question. What is the earth shaking news in the world today? And that is a question that some may answer in different forms. Some may say it is a global pandemic. We've just experienced a period where COVID rocked this world and it became a shaking news perhaps. Others would say it is the global disintegration economically, politically, socially. And you see that around the world, there is an increase of riots. People are dissatisfied with their political situation or their economical situation or their social eco situation. And that is also news. Uh, some may say it is the emerging of the new superpower. Is it gonna be China? Is it gonna be the US still? Uh, is there another super world power emerging? Yet it is something that is being overlooked. The media powerhouses are totally ignoring it. They don't speak about it. I think even the economical faith bodies have lost track of it. Yet it is the momentous news one can consider. And that is the global progression of the gospel of Jesus Christ in the last two centuries. That is the earth shaking news, brothers and sisters. There's no greater news than the progression of the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. I remember being with you in the first uh, session where they were covering the perspectives of, of missions, biblical perspective of missions. And the text which gives us the mandate for the Great Commission was one of those that you covered. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Go into the world and make disciples of all nations. The all nations there meaning ta ethne. That is all people groups or ethnic groups. And I remember, was it Dr. Joseph Munoz who raised the question of, is everybody who is a believer a missionary? And the responses were very interesting, but the, the consensus was that yes, everybody is a missionary. I think you can answer that question uh, in a twofold sense. You can look at the general sense, and then you can look at the technical or specific sense. In the general sense, you can say, yes, indeed, everybody is a missionary, and everybody should have the responsibility for missions, because God, Jesus Christ, gave this command to all disciples, and therefore all disciples are missionaries. But there's a technical sense to that question, and a technical answer. Can everybody go to the mission field? And there is where you realize that not everybody can go to the front line of the missions, but everybody has a responsibility for missions. So why are we not going? And why are we not sending? 
And even before we respond to that, what the question of what then is needed for us to engage with this as pastors and as people who have congregations, perhaps we can look at what then is the need? Is mission still relevant today? And indeed it is. There's a current need, the need of the unreached people groups. Maybe you've already covered this in this webinar. And if you have, perhaps it will be a reminder. And if you're not, well, this is the heart of the matter. Our heart beats for those people who have not yet been reached with the gospel. And I just wanted to look at a little bit of uh, the statistics. My information here might be a little bit outdated because this information changes every single day. But when you think of the number of people in this world, we have about 7.8 billion, almost 8 billion soon. Of the 7.8 billion people in the world today, only about 3.28, and I say only about, are not reached with the gospel. Those are people who are unreached with the gospel. They do not have access to the gospel. That's about 41.8, 42% of the world population today are somewhere where they cannot access the gospel. Maybe you can think of those in terms of people groups because Jesus said, go to the whole world, ta ethne. There are about 196 countries in the world that is comprising of the 7.8 billion people. Well, that translates to about 17,446 unique people groups. And of those unique people groups, 7,400 are unreached with the gospel, right? Of these 7,400 unreached people groups, there are about 4,986 who are considered frontier people groups. These people groups do not have any church in their midst. They don't have a significant amount of believers. Actually, if they do have a believer, they are less than 0.2% of their population. There are no missionaries, there are no workers amongst them, engaging with them. Majority of these people group, are actually 90% leave among the 1040 window. That is the home of what is known as the Thumb people, the tribal, the Hindu, the unreligious, the Muslim, the Buddhist. And if you consider that 1040 window, 5.2 billion people live in that 1040 window. And yet 3.16 are unreached. At the moment, we have less than 3% of cross-cultural gospel proclamation being done in this 1040 window. Well, we can come closer to our own home ground. In the continent of Africa, almost about a thousand people groups are not reached with the gospel. That's about 320 million people. And that is 28% of Africa's population is not reached with the gospel. 41% of these are Muslim. And I'm asking myself, why are we not going? Yet the mandate that Jesus Christ gave was very clear. There is a devastating imbalance. And this is the phenomenon that is, is happening in the church today. You find that 90% of the work of gospel proclamation is often done among 10% of the world population. And 10% of the workers are left to minister to 90% of the world population. When you think about the budget of your church, 
How much of that is designated to missions? When we think about the church in Africa, how much of the church in Africa is sending workers? Yet, the mandate is very clear. So what is needed? I believe that the church must strategically do three things. And the three things that the church must do is the church must mobilize its workers. The church must begin to engage in mobilizing workers for this task. The mandate is for every believer and every believer has a responsibility. And particularly, I thank God that we have you pastors from the Thika diocese that are, God is beginning to awaken us as a church, but we need to engage our flock, those that we are shepherding for this task. There's a second element that we need to do, and that is involving training. We need to equip these workers for cross-cultural gospel proclamation. Training is very significant in this paradigm of reaching the unreached. Statistics show us that those people who go to the field without training, 70% come back in the first year. So we understand that training is paramount. It is important. It is needed. If we are to reach the unreached with the gospel, if we are to plant churches where God is calling us to plant churches, we have to engage in mobilizing. We have to engage in training. We have to engage then in sending. And we will be sending workers to the unreached using all God-given resources. Where we feel God has gifted us and where we feel that God has called us is this aspect of coming alongside you who God is indeed now raising to be the one to take the mantle for missions. Where God has called us is to come alongside you and offer this area of training component. And so God has sent us here to Africa, particularly after a period of being away from Kenya for 20 years and working in a cross-cultural mission training program in the Netherlands. God specifically gave us a clear call to come back to Africa and to be able to set up a cross-cultural mission training program for Africa. We want to engage in partnering with the church so that the workers that God will be mobilizing for Africa will be people who are well equipped as the church is sending them so that we can be successful in going. I do not know if you know, but there is a change in dynamics at the moment. There's something God is doing in this world. For the long part, missions has been carried by the global north. But the church is dying in the global north. And yet God is raising the church in the global south, and that is Africa, and that is Asia, and that is Latin America. And I'm very sure when you, when you encountered Patrick Johnston in one of your sessions, he may have covered what God is doing. Now, how prepared are we, pastors, for this task? How prepared are our workers for this task? This is the program that God has called us to be able to set up here in Africa. We will trust the Lord for this program, and it will be called Anchor Cross Culture Mission Training Program. The vision that we carry is to reach the unreached with the gospel by training and equipping effective workers cross culturally for missions in partnership with you, the church. 
I believe strongly that the work of the mission is the work of the church. God gave that work to the church, not to the mission organization. The church needs to be the forefront in sending workers. We can only come alongside you to partner with you in providing what you may be able to need for sending those workers. And this is our vision. The mission will, is to provide qualified training that equips workers biblically, practically, effectively for cross-cultural missions. And this is for effective cross-cultural missions to the unreached in Africa and globally. What is the plan? Well, we hope to set up this cross-cultural mission training program in Africa. At the moment, God has placed us in Kenya, and that is where we have been working from, all right? But the training itself, the model of the training is to be holistic. We will try to engage with the head. We'll try to engage in giving practical skills. And then we'll try to engage in ensuring that those workers that you will send are shaped spiritually for the task. And thus, the training will emphasize on Bible practice and spiritual formation. Why those three? Because those three are instrumental. When I mentioned about the statistics of the missionaries who end up being sent but come back prematurely, there are about 30 reasons that were given. And of those 30 reasons, the top 10 reasons why those missionaries come back prematurely relate to relationships and their spiritual formation. So our goal and our desire is to be able to be used of the Lord to come alongside you. As you mobilize, as you train, we will offer that training component. And in this way, we'll be partnering with you in sending missionary workers who are well equipped for the mission field. Where's, where are we at in the progress of this work? Well, since we came back, I came back in, in 2001, in the beginning of 2001, and we have engaged in trying to understand the context of missions in Africa. How does the church perceive missions here? Is there any training available cross-culturally for workers? And what is needed? in terms of our curriculum. God has helped us so far to be able to develop a curriculum that is for Africa and that is for all. We will not train for any particular denomination. We are hoping to train for the Church of Africa, interdenominational. Yet we are hoping that this curriculum is for this context. And therefore we have done the hard work of developing a curriculum that is suited for you, for Africa. At the moment, God is leading us in the direction of now looking for the location where we will place this training, the facility, the personnel, and the partners. And we hope that by the coming year, we will have launched this program and it will be available for you, the church and particularly for any one of you who needs to engage. My invitation to you is to consider partnering with the work of training and the work of sending and the work of mobilizing. And maybe there are these four ways by which we can partner together. Create awareness of this need. Perhaps you as a church can begin to engage with your own workers. Engage them in inviting speakers who will share the need of the unreached people groups. Perhaps engage them in organizing mission events, a mission Sunday or a mission conference or even a mission outreach. Perhaps engage in mission prayer movement in your church. Pick an unreached people group and begin to pray for these unreached people groups. Provide the platform in which your workers can then be mobilized. 
where people can hear the call of God and respond. Identify within your church, who is it that God is calling for the work of the mission? Engage them in being trained and then send these workers from your church. And even as you send them, ensure that they are well supported. I believe if we are committed to the work of reaching the unreached, God will do a tremendous work in reaching the unreached through the church in Africa. The time is now for Africa, the church of Africa, to go forth, to rise up, to respond to this mandate. And so I wanted to pre present this opportunity for you in terms of just helping you understand what God is doing and how God is leading in directing the work that he has called us to do and how this is available for you. It is for you. This mission training program, Our Heart's Desire, is that it should be for Africa and it should be by Africa and it should be to Africa and beyond. May God bless you. If you feel the need to reach out, please reach out. We will be able to engage with you further and I can be able to share a little bit more of the information, but I'm looking forward to just your responses. And perhaps you can inform us, how can we come alongside you to help train your workers, to help engage with you in whatever way you may want us to engage with you so that you are sending out workers who are fully trained and equipped. Thank you very much and God bless you. I can take any questions at this point if they are. Thank you very much, Paul. Um